Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. And I think our mic is working now. What do you think, Fred? I think it's working too. I'm ready to have a conversation. Great. So here's a doofy. The infamous newscaster and entertainer Alex Jones of Infowars.com was banned from several platforms at once in what appears to be a coordinated attack against his network, um, silencing one of the most outspoken voices on right-wing conspiracy-oriented media. Um, He was taken off Facebook, YouTube, Spotify, iTunes, all within a couple hours of each other. Facebook came out and at 3 a.m., which impeccable timing, Facebook, banned several pages associated with InfraWars and put out a statement saying it glorified violence and used dehumanizing language, something I wouldn't put past Alex Jones. Um, He absolutely was pushing it. Even after Facebook gave him a temporary suspension, he would show up on live streams of pages of his colleagues um and apple classified it as hate speech they put out a statement some of these companies gave specific statements some of them just came out and said um it violated the terms of service and we don't support companies that do that um so it's kind of a big deal yeah i agree um it is a big deal now i I don't mean to simplify this Uh, i think it's just a good jumping off point but he is under a really big lawsuit right now for the Sandy Hook thing, it seemed to really, I was reading up on it, it gained speed back in early, late July, excuse me. So I don't know, one, if it's all these platforms just trying to cover their own ass uh, to take them down and maybe, it, you know, and show a support for the victims because, you know, dealing with Sandy Hook, that's a super touchy subject, which I completely understand. No, I don't think the corporations are really in threat from that. I think they're banning him because they think the viewers are under some threat how somehow from this information and you mentioned sandy hook so a lot of the media today about these shootings like the orlando shooting or the one in vegas uh being orchestrated you see stuff like that come out um that is pushed by alex jones and his whole fan base um they think it's orchestrated as an attempt to push liberal agendas like gun control And the whole idea really took off in the shooting in uh, Sandy Hook, Connecticut, which was particularly brutal and mysterious. And Alex Jones is one of the people that called out the victim's parents of the shooting as child actors because they were acting so strange the day after this happened, where they're still shell-shocked and have cameras put on them. And uh, that has been a common motif. I mean, he kind of took back what he said about Sandy Hook. But then again, when a new massacre comes up, he's one of the first people to say, this is another false flag operation. This is another orchestration of the government to to scare you and manipulate you. Right. And it was, in recent memory, it was the big thing. I mean, obviously, a lot of what he said is, is, says is complete nonsense. You know, a lot of people listen to it for fun. Some people do believe it. Uh, it's a very small percentage of the population, at least I, I think I could be surprised, you know, I mean, I, I can't speak for the rest of the country, some backwoods places or whatnot, but he said a lot of things through the years, but definitely him doing that with Sandy Hook has really made a lot of people rethink what he's saying or maybe brought to light to think, oh, this guy's words are dangerous. Uh, and then on top of this whole Pizzagate thing, that was absolutely ludicrous. Uh, if you don't know about that, it's him saying that the Democrats were running some sort of pedophilia ring out of a small pizza place in Washington, D.C. And it was Hillary or Barack or, you know, whatever. We'll just say the Democrats for now. And then somebody did show up with a gun. So that's like two things, you know, within a short amount of time where people could really be harmed from his words. And now, you know, since that there's a lawsuit, I really think it's... Uh, YouTube, all these people saying, you know, they side with, not with Alex Jones, with the accusers. Now, maybe he'll get his platform back after it's all been said and done, because his Google Play hasn't dropped him yet, correct? I mean, he still has Obviously a few not, different, plat- yeah. so few he different platforms. So he Facebook, YouTube, Spotify, um, all within a matter of 12 hours. He wasn't banned from Twitter. And I, I watched an interview that the CEO of Twitter had on uh, 
CNN, uh, Jack Dorsey, and uh, he said something really impactful. He said, it's so important to see the world how it is. And he claimed that Alex Jones didn't violate the terms of service for his site. Um, He did say one controversial thing that they suspended his account for, but he will get it back. A lot of people have gone after Twitter and Jack Dorsey for uh, not banning Alex Jones when these other social media platforms did. Um, So it's so important to see the world how it is, meaning like if we take Alex Jones away from Twitter, we're kind of whitewashing what people are want to consume and what's you know the reality of what media sources are out there and that doesn't necessarily make for a better world because that's not a truthful world Mm -hmm. we have to acknowledge that these people out there have these opinions and decide for ourselves what does more danger alex jones saying these things accusing innocent families um stirring up fake conspiracy theories that can sometimes lead to violence or having these platforms decide what content we can and can't consume can and can't consume excuse me and limit our free speech so you put out a big point saying that the ceo of twitter said that alex jones didn't violate any of their terms of service mm-hmm. now, uh, the other platforms argue that he mm-hmm. Um, it also makes me it makes me wonder who actually reads those terms of service, because uh, I know hate speech is is defined. I, I don't want to say it's clearly defined in our own freedom of speech sort of way, but I was listening to something on on Facebook's terms of service, and it's like you're allowed to say. Uh, I hate that. Now this sounds super silly, and this is what I, it actually came up as the example they were using. It was a good radio ad podcast. You're able to say I hate black children, but you're not able to say I hate men or men are scum uh, because they have certain kind of tiers of generating like hate speech. Because children are a certain kind of black people, it doesn't encounter all black people. So you can say that, or you could say like I hate Muslim taxi drivers, or I hate. Chinese bakers but if you just put a blanket thing out of saying kill all Chinese kill all men kill all women something like that then that's what violates the terms of service so it's a very it's very strange and in Radio Lab too if you know after you're done listening to our entertaining conversation here definitely go and listen to one of the more recent Radio Labs on this it's a good ancillary conversation um but if they do I mean they're they're able to to drop you uh so you know i i don't know do you think do you think this is an oversimplification or over comparison to say you know if you violate terms of service it's like going into an actual store or an actual business not wearing a shirt or something and they can kick you out you know if they have a sign blatantly saying you know no shirt no shoes no service sort of thing you know, is it, I know we're dealing with like a website as opposed to a store. Yeah, I think it's a little bit of an oversimplification, um, or at least maybe that metaphor, because the exchange of information is something that's extremely, extremely important within a culture. And um, in the past, we had most of mainstream media was controlled by only a couple corporations, which we know have worked with the government and they've had a pretty strict control for a long time especially through television and newspaper mediums like that um they had a pretty strict control over what the american public sees and consumes and what they can't consume and then the internet came around and this information age we launched into uh very quickly and at first uh the government the law could not keep up. It was something that was so new and hard to regulate and understand. And um, now we see big moves like this happen, and this is not an isolated incident. There's been plenty of other voices that have been very controversially banned off uh, these major social media platforms. And it um, makes you wonder 
how comfortable are we with giving so much power to these entities to decide what we can and can't consume? How responsible are we for the information that we can consume? Um, I think it certainly it takes away from the the, the, so the West has this idea of believing in the individual, that there is a, um, a salvation in society if we focus on the individual and build ourselves up strong, then we'll be stronger as a community. And if we think that we're not capable of handling information that could be false, then we've taken away from our wherewithal, our ability to, to process reality, and we've kind of cushioned it a little bit. And um, I think that's dangerous. I think you should see the world for what it really is. Yeah, it is. Any censorship like that is, it is incredibly dangerous. And I don't want to go with a slippery slope sort of tear. I mean, I just think that that term is thrown around and it's starting to lose power because people will say it's a slippery slope with a lot of different things. But you're very you're you're very correct in terms of why is it that in a capitalist society too, and it's not even communism, right? I mean, because that was some of the the bigger fears of communism is that the government. I mean, we you know we see it in North Korea, uh, Soviet Russia. I think it was the same thing too, of the government shielding what they wanted their uh, citizens to know, right? I mean that that was a huge thing. So it's. Is, are we living right now with uh, capitalism's way of doing that, of businesses, which are, you know, especially with the introduction of Citizens United, you know, and this is, this is tying in a lot, and uh, it's kind of just coming out of my, my brain right now, um, saying that you can donate as much money as you want, and uh, towards a campaign, which I think... Oh, yeah, yeah and, and now it's because it was like crazy. 2010 or 2012. It's fairly recent, might have been 14. Past, yeah, um, it's big deal. But it's now, too, it's they consider that uh, corporations are individuals, which they could be immortal. You know, I mean, Apple, things like that, Amazon could be immortal. So is that big business's way? Is this them starting to censor what they want their consumers to know? You know, it, it's. Just having this conversation. It's a new animal. Yeah. You know, we've never dealt with a company before like Facebook that just adopts to whatever new thing is happening. If it's live feed, they got it. If it's stories that like Snapchat is doing, they got it. A company like Amazon has its fingers in so many different layers of business and healthcare and space technology and selling everything and anything it's just we've never seen entities like this and it's a new world combating them and seeing what amazing things that they can give us it's truly amazing i don't want to downplay their role but um you know we also have to ask like how powerful do we want these people to be especially when they start stepping in our information and how we how we digest it so i never really imagine myself um i don't want to say i'm defending alex jones i'm not i i think he's an imbecile and he's an entertainer so that he should be taken a little bit lighter you know yeah. i don't have a i don't really have a hatred for him i i but i like many other people check out his stuff not agreeing with it just want to see what he's up to just want to see what the right-wing conspiratorial mind is is thinking and there's some value in that too to know what the crazy loonies are up to, what they're thinking. And this way, when somebody brings up a conversation like Sandy Hook was a false flag, you know exactly the points that they're going to push, and you know why they're wrong. But if I don't know what the opposing viewpoint, viewpoint is, because it's censored, because it's not safe for my ears, I won't know why it's wrong. Right. Uh, and you brought up a great point, too, and I, I think this is super funny is that Alex Jones is, I don't want to say he's going to be the turning point, but, you know, within the past year or so, we've had intellectual people not spewing hate and not spewing lies or anything. You know, people, uh, what's his name? Um, Brett Weinstein, you know, the Jordan Petersons being booed off a stage, censored. I mean, even I think 
uh, when Jordan Peterson was on Rogan, a few times, a few of Rogan's episodes were taken down because YouTube saw really? that it was Peterson and said that he's spewing hate speech. Yeah. And it's, if you ever listen to the guy talk, man, he's brilliant. He's, there's no, you know, you don't really see hating that, that guy when he talks. I don't understand it. And that was taken down, but it wasn't as much of an uproar. But now Alex Jones gets taken down for saying all this like ridiculous stuff. And this is even prompting our conversation. And it's, it just it's adds weird. fuel to the fire, man. You know, it just gives those people another thing to say that we were censored because we're giving the truth and the Illuminati or the powers that be don't want that information out. So they're in, in cahoots with these big corporations. And I wonder, man, I wonder what capacity, even if it's 5% of that is true. Because if what Alex Jones is talking about is right, even just a little bit, and we censor him, that's that's a really big deal, man. We have to think about the implications of that. Right. We have to think really hard about that. Question. Uh, we kind of touched upon this when you were talking about this before the show. Do you think Trump's war on the media somehow ties into this? Because we know Donald Trump loves his conspiracies, loves to bring it up on his... Uh, cam- he brought it up on the campaign trail. He still has a war with fake news and hate CNN. And he's, I mean, for God's sakes, the guy's creating a space force. Like if, you know, it's absurd. And he takes a lot of what Alex Jones says to to heart. I mean, was it Alex Jones brought up the thing? Oh yeah, Alex Jones on the show once. And, um, you know, I I don't want to say he's like his main source of information or anything, but I think Trump is certainly aware that that, group of people has a worldview that puts Trump in a hero position and he's not going to compromise that or say anything to alienate that part of his fan base because he needs that he he needs those approval ratings he needs some kind of like that support behind him and to think that Hillary Clinton is a demonic Satan worshipping you know pedophile ring uh, yeah whatever um that is some of the worst thing the worst things you can be and then you look at trump and you're like you know what i'm gonna vote for that guy but it's not it's not just about votes um you know damien my my housemate pointed out to me uh fake news sounds a lot like fuck you it's got the same like syllable to it so when trump is like fake news it comes off the tongue like like an insult, you know? Yeah. Um, it's not fake news that gets us, man. I don't think it is. You know what I think it is? It's relatively true news. It's news that is 80% true or 50% true, and then the rest is fabricated. Yeah. And that creates an environment that is so easy to just suck people's credulity in. And if you feel a certain way, you will filter out the information that doesn't support your worldview and you will attach to the ones that do. And that's just human habit. Uh That's just who we are. Yeah. I mean, that's when we, when we learn anything, we have to find a way to make it fun. So the majority of us now, especially in this culture where we need to be entertained all the time in order to pay attention to it, putting that 10, 20% on the news to make it more fun. I see exactly what you're saying. It's catchy. It's really needed in this day and age to keep a lot of people's attention span. Uh, and then, yeah, you just bring it into the truth somehow because it's an easy way to remember it or it's just fun to talk about. So I get exactly what you're saying. Uh, yeah, making the news a lot less boring. It's like watching the news in the 1970s compared to watching the news now, you know, when it was just straight Walter Cronkite, and that's the way it was. Yeah. To- but it ain't no Walter Cronkite anymore. It's a new world. I don't know if the media is better off that we... Don't have Alex Jones, um, but letting these major tech giants ban him in syncopation is not how I want to see him go. Thanks for listening. Sorry if it sounds like my voice is underwater at some points. Uh, We were having some technical difficulties, but we're just trying to get content out and learn how to not suck at this. So ask good questions and fail better. First walk out. (laughs) 